Joining us from the Voice of the Martyrs is Todd Nettleton. He's fresh back from the Middle East. Todd, you met with some Syrian pastors. What did they tell you? There's sort of good news and bad news. The good news is that the church is growing. Uh, the faith of our Christian brothers and sisters is being strengthened. The bad news is there's persecution. It's coming with a cost. And uh, there's kidnappings. There's people being taken for ransom. There's people being killed. So the level of persecution is very high. Uh, but at the same time, the church is growing. Now, as you were there, there was a attack on Malula. That's a Christian town, an ancient Christian town, where they actually speak the language of Jesus. They still do that. Was there a concern yeah, that, for Malula? Well, there, there was great concern. And one of the things that they pointed out to us is that uh, there's not a, a government presence there. There's not an army presence there. It wasn't targeted for any kind of military reason. It was targeted uh, because it's a Christian village. It was targeted as a, a, a targeting Christians, not targeting the government. And the Christians that we talked to wanted to be sure that that was clear to the American audience, that uh, this wasn't a part of the war with the government. This was part of an attack on Christians. Okay, now we know that many of the Christians and probably some of the pastors that you met with are very concerned that about half of all rebel fighters are militants. They're jihadists, and some of them even part of Al-Qaeda or affiliated with Al-Qaeda. What are their concerns about the future if these guys come to power? So they don't call them freedom fighters. They don't call them rebels. They use the word terrorists. And uh, one of the questions we got as the discussion was going on about American involvement, they uh, several of them just looked us in the eye and said, why would America help the terrorists? Why would they do that? Uh, Christians are being told to leave their homes, Christian villages. Uh, the rebels will go in and announce from the loudspeakers of the mosques, hey, Christians, uh, you have 48 hours to leave the village or else. And so when they think about the rebels taking control of the whole country, they know that will mean more intense persecution uh, and more martyrdoms of Christians in Syria. What did these pastors tell you about jizya tax, uh, the protection money that Christians are forced to pay Muslims? We've heard that some of this is being implemented, uh, particularly in the northeastern part of the country, where Islamists are now controlling some of those villages. What did they tell you? We honestly did not talk about that. I have heard some of those reports as well. I've seen some of those reports coming from Egypt as well that uh, that's being put into place there. That is a longstanding uh, sort of practice in the Muslim world that uh, the so-called conquered peoples uh, pay that jizya tax. And basically, you're redeeming your life. You're paying the tax instead of being killed as uh, the conquered people. and. Uh, in, in sometimes in the past, they've actually had a ceremony where you pay that tax. Uh, the, the person accepting the tax makes the motion of slitting your throat, like uh, you're paying this money so that I don't slit your throat. And uh, if that comes to power and if those rebels come to power, it is possible uh, that many Christians in Syria will face that decision. Do I want to be killed or do I want to pay this tax, which basically ransoms my life uh, and the life of my family. As we talk about Syria, you know, as Americans, we like the, the good guy and the bad guy story, and uh, the good guys wear white hats and the bad guys wear black hats. Well, in Syria, uh, there aren't any guys wearing white hats. There aren't any good guys. It's just a level of uh, who's going to be worse for the Christians. And uh, the Christians there, the Assad government has tolerated them. There has been a certain level of freedom. Uh, what we heard when we were there is that right now the Assad government is so worried about the war, they're so worried about the rebels, they really don't have time to worry about the churches and to worry about persecuting the Christians. Now, again, you know, they're not the good guys and, and it's not complete freedom, uh, but in the eyes of the Christians that we talk to, it is very clear they trust the government more than they trust the rebels who could possibly take over. Okay, now there is a concern. If Assad falls and we end up with some Muslim Brotherhood or Islamist government in place there, which probably is a long way off because once he falls, there will be a struggle internally, maybe the balkanization of Syria. But still there's a concern from Christians that they will have Sharia law imposed on them wherever they are, and uh, many are considering leaving the country. I mean, many have already left, but what about those who remain? Well, there are thousands of Christians that have left the country. 
Uh, they fled into Turkey, they fled into Lebanon, they fled even some into Iraq. Uh, and so they recognize that if the rebels do in fact take over, life for them in Syria will become very, very difficult. And uh, they look ahead to that and say, you know, we need to get out while we can. And, and we heard stories of people getting out. Uh, we heard stories of people being captured as they were trying to get out. Uh, and it is, it's a drastic situation for them in Syria. Uh, but even once they get out of the country, you know, the, the situation as a refugee is not a good situation either. And uh, last month I was in Turkey and we were just outside of one of the camps where the Syrians are being housed. And uh, it, it's a tent city. It's a difficult place to live and survive. So the idea that uh, whatever they're going to have outside of Syria is better than what they have inside I think that shows the level of suffering that's happening in Syria right now, that they would rather be in a refugee camp uh, than be in their own homes in the dangerous country of Syria. And we've heard one report uh, recently, something like only six out of 10 uh, Christians are still remaining in the churches. Uh, this mass exodus that we're seeing, uh, if it continues, it could be a repeat of Iraq. What will that mean for Syria if all the Christians are gone? Well, you know, there are Christians that are leaving, but there are Christians that are staying as well. And uh, one of the pastors that we talked to, I asked him uh, the question sort of that I think of is, well, how do, you, how do you keep doing that? How do you keep functioning and keep ministering in spite of the threats and in spite of the danger? And, and what he said was, you know, I don't think about the threats. I don't think about the danger. I think about Christ. And uh, so even as there are so many that are leaving, there are many who are staying as well, and they are ministering. And uh, a lot of those who are leaving are from the sort of traditional Christian backgrounds, the Orthodox Church, uh, the Catholic Church, and others. Uh, there is also a great growth in the church of Muslim converts, people who are leaving Islam. And uh, one of the things that's leading them to do that is this war and the battles that are going on they see the true face of Islam. They see uh, people being killed while other people shout praises to Allah. And uh, they're asking the question, well, what kind of God do we serve that wants to be praised by killing people? What can we do? We get that question a lot here. Well, the first thing we can do is pray. And that was one of the things that all of the Syrian Christians that we talked to wanted to emphasize is how desperately Syria needs our prayers during these days and during these times. There is a need for help, but the first step is we desperately need to be in prayer for the country of Syria and especially for those of the household of faith, those of our Christian brothers and sisters who are there. Okay, Todd Nettleton, we appreciate the work you're doing for the Persecuted Church, also VOM. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.